everybody. Uh, I'm Peter, and I like uh, doing live demos. Uh, so uh, I guess you've had a chance to read this. Uh, I have a dictionary of weird characters. I have a function that does something to them. I can show you what it does if I say hello. It writes hello back. Uh, it writes hello backwards, right? So these aren't that interesting. Uh, I now want to show it to you. So. Uh, if I want to run this again, I have to run the whole program again. Uh, that's not very nice, so I can put it in a loop. And I get tired of it quite easily, and I can't close it except with Control C. I would like to do better. How can I do better now? Uh, I can see, I can, uh, I can do while text, but at the beginning there is no text, so maybe I can do something like text equals true, and now it'll all work very nicely. If I don't do anything, it exits. Uh, this is a really weird hack, though. Uh, also, I have this blank line here. I would like to get rid of that somehow. Uh, so I can do something like while true, and uh, put my condition in here and break. Who of you has done something like this? Yeah, th this is the form I teach at courses. It's really weird because what I would like to do here is somehow put this whole condition in the while. But if you know Python, you know this doesn't work because you can only assign uh, as a statement, not as an expression. Isn't that a weird explanation? It wouldn't be nice if I could do something like, uh, you know, assign, put it this thing in that variable and then use it for the whole uh, while loop. Uh, so languages like C or JavaScript allow this. Uh, languages like Pascal do this weird operator here that looks like a walrus. Uh, a motion icon. It turns out Python can do this as well. Right? Who, would you, who of you wants to use this? Soon you will all have to use this because this is, uh, <laughs> this is uh, part of the upcoming Python 3.8, which is now in alpha 2. Uh, if you install it, it's already available. Uh, you can play around this, this new operator and all the other things that are new, there's not that many of them yet because uh, they will be added just before the featured uh, deadline, of course. Uh, and I, I have this Fedora badge with me and I'm uh, running the operating system called Fedora. So I'm supposed to say that uh, Python 3.8 is already in the repositories on the system. We're uh, uh, trying all the software on the system with the Python 3.8 and seeing all the bugs, seeing everything go in flames. Like uh, uh, NumPy has actually in tests, it, has, it assumes that Python 3.8 uh, has a feature that is not really there yet. And uh, XML tests fail everywhere. It's really fun. Uh, so you should also uh, test your software with the upcoming version of uh, Python if you're doing any kind of shared libraries, putting anything on PyPI. Uh, Install Python 3.8. If you have Fedora, it's, it's there, like, uh, you know, DNF install Python 3.8, and uh, let's not do this from the internet. Uh, yep. And uh, if you see any bug, please report it so uh, the final, uh, final release can be without bugs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh Lightning tool number one, who is ready next? Thank you very much, that was wonderful. I understood uh, like 10%, but I still love the sound of your voice. Okay. Okay, next lightning talk. What is it going to be about? It's going to be about open source hardware and how to use it to cure uh, burnout for software engineers. Oh, perfect, perfect. Okay. Uh, five minutes, are you ready? Starting yeah. now. Yes, I am. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? You can. Okay. So, 
Uh, is it full screen? It's not. Now it's full screen. Okay. So uh, the topic of my lightning talk is, uh, well, you can see it. Uh, I'll start with a little disclaimer. I don't really know much about, about this, except for my personal experience and a little bit of Googling. The whole talk is uh, probably not as funny as I think it is. And uh, I'm actually quite terrified of public speaking. So, but what, thank you. <laughs> well, that's what's, uh, that's what's kind of uh, beautiful about lightning talks, right? If they are great, they are great. And if they are not that great, they are at least short. So uh, nobody gives a fuck, right? So just chill, I guess. So uh, the first point is uh, software sucks, right? We've all been there. You're coding for like 14 hours. Uh, you're tired. Your back aches. Uh, nothing works. Uh, the whole thing makes no fucking sense. I'm sorry for the language. Uh, try not to do that again. <laughs> and uh, you're thinking like, who? could ever write something as obfuscated as this. And uh, it was probably you. So uh, <laughs> what should you do? Well, I mean, developing software is hard, right? Uh, maybe it's just not hard enough. So try hardware. It's heavy, it's noisy, it's filthy, and it's beautiful. Uh, well. What's great about it, actually, that you can uh, hit it with a hammer and actually repair it. <laughs> Try doing that to your shell script. You'll probably miss it, miss the software completely, and uh, only hit the hardware anyways. So turn off the damn computer and get your hands dirty. Uh, and the best thing about hardware is it can also be open source. Uh, we know what that means and why we love open source, but what it means for hardware it, it is that it can be developed globally, so uh, everybody around the globe can uh, take part. It can be built locally, so there's no really no need to uh, like uh, ship uh, cheap plastic shit from China. You can uh, you can just print it on your printer and then throw it away. And it's usually affordable, a lot more affordable than, uh, than proprietary variants. It's extensible. If, it, if you think it should do something, it doesn't. You just, uh, you just uh, extend it. And what is, uh, what is great, I think, it's uh, repairable. So you have all been there. Uh, one little part in your washing machine or, uh, or television breaks, and you have to just take the whole thing and throw it away. Uh, that's not the case with uh, open source hardware, so I think it's great. Uh, okay, so uh, I will just show you some, uh, some nice pieces of hardware, nice projects. I don't have much time. So uh, this is like conventional hardware. It's a computing, uh, computing hardware. So you can, uh, what's great is that you can uh, put, uh, take, take open source hardware, put open source software on it, and uh, all this open source and great, and uh, you love it. Uh, but what I like uh, really a lot, what I'm excited about is pre 3D printing. You all know it. Uh, it can also, oh, I don't have much time. So 3D printing. You can print anything you want. Uh, you can download it from the internet. You can make your own. You can even uh, take your 3D printer and print another 3D printer. And that is, uh, this is something which is, I think, insanely cool. Uh, I like this one. It's a CNC rotor, so you can be like your own IKEA, uh, and uh, you can build it with a um, fraction of a, of a price of a, of a regular CNC rotor. And you can just make your own furniture. Uh, you can even download the furniture from the internet. Uh, or you can make uh, whatever the hell you want. So uh, thank you. Open source hardware is just as great, but you can hit it with a hammer. Thank you.
Thank you very much. That was lightning till number two. Uh, who's next? Uh, oh, hi. Hi, how Hi. are you? We are brothers. We always oh, do. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. So he's doing the dance and you'll be singing, right? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Something lively and something that I will finally understand. Yeah, this one will be easy. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. okay. Anton for sharing the laptop. This will be another straight uh, conference announcement. There will be... A few here, so we'll keep this short. Um, if you are not already booked, beginning of May, either by going to PyCon US or by going to PyCon Italy, you're warmly invited to come to Vienna. It's pretty close, actually. We have a PyCon. It's not actually a PyCon, but it's a small Python conference. Last year, we had about 35 talks and workshops. I would say that value for money is pretty good because entry is free. The only thing we ask is that you please register so that we can, uh, you know, like uh, prepare an appropriate amount of sandwiches and, and drinks and stuff like this. Uh, URL, maybe this is the most important takeaway, is pydays.at. CFP is still open until Monday if you feel like uh, submitting a talk. Go ahead. And this is basically it. Thank you very much. That was lightning fast. You are the, the, just a technician? No, no, I was okay, supposed okay. to do the dancing. Ah, thing. okay, okay, so I'm still waiting for that. Is this another lightning talk? Yes, uh, okay, it's, it's a separate one. one. Okay, wonderful, uh, go. Hey everyone, the story I'm going to share with you started at 2016 at PyCon Germany that we organized in Munich. So back then another conference was happening on the same date and we decided why don't we connect the audiences with a video call, you know, to engage each other, to uh, send greetings. It was a pretty cool experience. Everyone loved it. It was live stream from Hong Kong. It's, you're feeling like a part of something bigger. We loved it. It was all gone and we forgot about that for two years until in the year 2018, the wonderful team from PyCon Odessa asked me for a favor. Because I'm Ukrainian, and Odessa is in Ukraine, if you don't know where, that's where. It's not exactly the center of Ukraine, and it's also not certainly the center of the world. So there are missing international context of the conference. They asked me for help. And then I thought, well, that was not a bad idea back then to, you know, do this uh, uh, live stream. But there was no event happening on the same date. So I had another idea. Well, I run PyMunich meetups in Munich. So I thought, why don't I just record the video and send it to them. Uh, do we have sound here, hopefully? Three, two, one. Cheers, Odessa Pi. Did you hear it? Greetings from Pi Munich. Great. It worked, it worked. And I was traveling to Odessa. I felt like a travel pigeon, basically, with this message. I played it to them. They loved it. And they loved it so much that I thought right away, why don't I record another one? And I knew that I was invited to do a keynote at PyCon San Sebastian. So we just recorded one for San Sebastian. Yes. And then I got really obsessed about this idea, PyCon Relate. I wasn't feeling any more like a travel pigeon, uh, like a male pigeon. I was feeling like the Olympics athlete, you know, bringing the fire from one place to another. And to make it even more dramatic, I thought I will travel on a motorcycle from Munich to San Sebastian. I'll play this video. And that's what I did. Of course, they loved it again, and I was like getting totally crazy about this. Next event was in New York just a couple of weeks later. I flew to New York, but the pilot was a troll, I guess, and I landed at Boston. That's, that's quite a long way. I landed at night at 2 a.m. or less, and uh, I had to do a talk next morning. So I teamed up with others, uh, with other passengers, and I hired Uber Ride from Boston to Philadelphia to do it. And they freaking did it. This time I didn't feel like a pigeon or like an athlete. I felt like a freaking Prometheus. <laughs> And then I went from New York to Belgrade. The, the travel was not that dramatic anymore. But we had the problem there. The problem was that uh, it was end of the year. It was already November. And I didn't know what conference will be next. I didn't know what, what will I attend. But I knew one conference that I love. And I knew that I cannot miss it. Guess which? Are we ready? Three, two, one, go. Ahoy, Slovakia! Have a nice event. Cheers the Cool. I'll take a picture. Nice. All right. That's it. That's it. Uh, we still have some time. So guess what happens next? 
The next conference I'm going to is uh, PyCon Italia. It will be in May, and uh, I kindly ask you to say greetings to PyCon Italia, and it will be really cool. Maybe you can just uh, say, like, um, uh, Spike, uh, community of Slovakia is wishing you to have a great event or something like that, because I'm really getting out of words. Uh, it's, uh, the videos are the same, but I want to add some something new there. So, uh, you I you have say an uh, idea. So maybe you should do it like this, like, ha, hi, Pike on Italia. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Let's do it. We have one minute. We need to be fast. So, uh, greetings, Pike on Italia. You can do the Italian accent. They will love it. Are we ready? Three, two, one, go! Greetings, Greetings PyCon Italia! Greetings from the community of Slovakia! Cheers! Bravo! <laughs> Thank you for attention. That's it. 39 seconds, come on. I tried my best. I tried my best. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. This was the next lighting talk. Who's next? Do we have anybody else? Ah, hi. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. Uh, my talk will be quick. Thank you very much for bringing such a cheerful atmosphere. That was amazing. Where are you there? Yeah. <laughs> So thanks for that, it's evening already, so that was a very nice spin. Uh, my talk will not be a talk, it will be an invitation. It's especially for women, which there are not that many in the room, which is exactly the case. So we are trying to start a Pi Ladies community in Bratislava, which is a meetup for girls, women uh, interested in Python, so enthusiastic developers or beginners even. You might have seen some people with Pi Ladies t-shirts around, around here. They are our Czech colleagues who are already running a big community there. They are having events on a weekly basis. So we are starting small. We just have monthly uh, meetups now, but please join if you are interested. You can find us on PyLadies.com and there click to Bratislava location and you will find an email address and also on Facebook, Pi Ladies Bratislava. Bratislava, and what else to mention? We'll see what the audience will be like, and that will, uh, and that will shape the future of the meetups. So currently, we had more like beginners type of people, but if we have more experienced people, it would be great to like have it as a place to exchange our experience, share the knowledge, and like just meet the people with the same background, which might be nice from time to time. So yeah, that's it. And also it's an international place, so it's a good place to also try, uh, practice your English if you wish so. We all have people from not just Slovakia, but also one lady from Turkey and one from Algeria, and the leader is from uh, Portugal, so really international place. So yeah, please join us. So, uh, hello, this will be talk about May I start? Yes. Oh, I did start. Uh, about India Elf. What is India Elf? So let's start with the indie part. There is a community of people who call themselves the Indie Web, which is an independent alternative web to the corporate websites, such as the Bluebird stuff, the Zuckerberg pile of something, and all, all other walled gardens and silos. So these people, they want to take the control of their data back to themselves and to provide content on their own websites to uh, do it like in the 90s, basically. But with some uh, uh, progress we've made in the meantime, such as uh, mobile applications and likes and stars and whatever. So the in the auth part is uh, kind of working on top of the OAuth, which Joel inspired me to do this. And it's really simple to set up. You can write services for that, and all you need is your domain. Such a nice website like this one. And there is a couple of standards and protocols which will allow you to log into a service via a provider which you can host your, on your own or use someone else like this one. And how does it work? Live demo. So here. On my side, I have a link to my GitHub profile. It can be many, many more others, or some dummy GPG key. And how, this, how does this work? On my website, the blank one, I have some links to my other identities, like this GitHub link. On the GitHub link, I have the 
bike link to my own website. And what I can do is to ask GitHub to tell that website I am who I am trying to pretend to be. You redirect, you use the GitHub's OAuth, it does magic, and you're logged in. And you can work with the service. And there is more ways how to do that. For example, using the GPG key, a really secure one, this one. You get some nonce, you sign it, Very secret, secret one, two, three, four, and I can't write. It signs this small thing in my hands are shaking. You put it in. You can do this on your phone. No service provider knows that you are logging in, and you're in. So this way you can build applications that the people can authenticate and authorize towards it with their own websites, and you can get creative. You don't have to rely on the vault gardens. Yep. That's it. OK, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Milan, thank you. Do we have anybody else? Raise your hand. OK, so come in, come over. Two more lightning talks, five minutes each. Yes, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's go, five minutes starting now. Hello everybody, I actually don't need the whole five minutes for my lightning talk, so let me use the first one to, well, to thank you all for this perfect conference with awesome atmosphere and please help me with a huge applause to all organizers. Thank you, thank you. I think that they deserve it. Uh, how many of you were on PyCon in Czech Republic? Raise your hand, please. Oh, not that many. And I have good news for you. If you were there, you remember that it was a perfect event with an awesome atmosphere, great people, community staff, great food, awesome party, full of inspirational talks, etc., etc. But it, oh, sorry, bad picture, it's not. <laughs> uh, but it was kinda far away from Bratislava. So, now I have a great, great news for you. This year, PyCon Czech is moving from uh, Prague to Ostrava, the really nice industrial part of the city, and all previous advantages of this event included. So. Also, Ostrava will host the next PyCon CZ. It will be in the middle of June. You are all welcome. You can uh, looking for a really nice part of uh, industrial, industrial city with a great inspirational talk. Actually, we are now working on schedule, at etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are actually uh, selling tickets. Early birds are sold, sold out, unfortunately, but still a lot of tickets are available and the schedule will be ready soon. So looking forward to see you in, in Ostrava. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, uh, ready? hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, David. I'm one of the uh, organizers of uh, the Polish PyCon, PyCon PL. Uh, and uh, if you were on PyCon PL for the last maybe four years, this was our venue, very cool, very beautiful, but no more, unfortunately. Uh, we have a new place, but you know, it's a, it's a secret, you know. It's fine. Uh, okay, uh, but it's a secret, of course, you know. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, it's in Zawiercie, Poland. Everyone, know, everyone knows where it is, you know, very popular place. Uh, if you don't know, it's here, and the blue dot is of, of obviously Bratislava. Uh, it's gonna be in the middle of September this year. Uh, you can get there by plane, uh, by train, from many major European cities, uh, by car, or maybe, you know, if you like running, then I guess you could start running right now, so you can arrive in, in September. Uh, it's gonna be in a four-star hotel, uh, looks like this, very cool, very nice. Uh, you know, two beds, if 
uh, you know. Uh, we have, uh, the hotel has like a cool local microbrewery with craft beer, you know, I, I, I know you like beer. Um, there's a barbecue, there will be a barbecue dinner party. Uh, we always have board games during the evening, also retro zone. So if you like the old computers, old games, you can try them. And we have our uh, coding challenge, which is really cool. A lot of people participate. We have cool uh, prizes, stuff like that. Uh, call for proposals, we start in April, early April. Uh, remember the date and our website is here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so, how many of you contribute to an open source project? Okay, that's awesome. So, uh, since a lot of people, when they contribute to open source, uh, they do that as a volunteer, uh, we thought to uh, have a way how to help them, especially uh, when they have, let's say, they want to organize uh, meetups with each other, and most of the contributors are in different countries. And it's kind of difficult to bring them together at one place or when they want to, uh, I don't know, attend a conference which they really like and can be helpful uh, for their project. So to make that happen, uh, we have SourceLift at Kiwi.com. So like to uh, help these teams uh, to cover their flight uh, expenses. So if you are working and contributing to an open source project, uh, feel free to apply. Uh, usually we have it for teams that are two or more people. Uh, but yeah, like there are corner cases, so um, you can just apply. And if you have question, you can contact us at this email address, so sourceleaf at uh, for uh, more details. So how many of you were there last year for PyCon Balkan? Only two, okay. So this is also some pictures from PyCon Balkan. And uh, this year it will happen again in Belgrade. It will be from 3 to 5 October, and uh, it will be again at the same venue. Uh, for now, we have only these two speakers, keynotes that uh, they have approved, and very soon we will open the call for proposals, and you can also uh, get a ticket to join, so you are more than welcome uh, to join us in October in Belgrade. So thank you. So, uh, why cookie, uh, cookie consent doesn't matter? Uh, I want to talk about privacy. And uh, first time when I, when, I, uh, when I started to think about privacy, uh, it was uh, something like nine years ago, uh, uh, when uh, Google started to show me annoying ads. Uh, I was uh, on different websites. Uh, I started to think what uh, Google knows about me and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, since Google at the time uh, was uh, reading all your email that you got uh, via Gmail, uh, and I was talking to uh, my friend about uh, stuff uh, around pregnancy, uh, Google started to show me ads for baby strollers, kid stuff, and something like that. So uh, I just thought it would be fun to register for one website and uh, that uh, promised to, if you register here, you can win a baby stroller. I, I thought, well, that could be fun. And yeah, I won a baby stroller. Uh, I didn't claim the, the prize because I uh, made up all the details uh, except the uh, email and uh, phone number. So I just told, uh, told them that, well, this is the wrong number. Uh, but uh, then I started to think about it, how, how can I fight back? Uh, first thing uh, I did was uh, to create a blacklist in my ETC host. Uh, this doesn't scale well because you have different trackers, different uh, ad networks and stuff. So I started to, uh, so I installed the Ghostery, this uh, extension to your browser that blocks uh, trackers and, uh, uh, and advertisers. It's not perfect, but uh, because it's a private, uh, it's built by a private company, but I'll talk about it in a little bit. Uh, fast forward to the, today, uh, GDPR certainly helped. Uh, Google doesn't, track, uh, doesn't uh, read your emails for uh, ad purposes, so that's, that's something that's really great. Also, companies doesn't share your data with the third parties if you don't consent to it. So that's uh, something that's also limited, uh, and you are a little bit more in control of your data. 
uh, but uh, some stuff uh, doesn't uh, doesn't change, and uh, something like that uh, uh, stuff that happened with my baby stroller, if uh, that. Uh, 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 that uh, competition was uh, held by an uh, e-shop, then that e-shop could target, retarget me with their uh, ads for kids stuff and something like that. So that's something that's certainly not, uh, it's uh, GDPR doesn't help with this. Uh, and also uh, cookies are not the only thing that can identify you. You can have uh, something different like uh, your uh, resolution of your screen and uh, type of your browser and uh, your operating system, uh, which creates a browser fingerprint. Uh, so that's something that uh, you also need to fight back. Uh, you can use, as I mentioned, Ghostery or Privacy Badger or uh, uh, well, you block, yeah, you block, uh, which are uh, browser extensions that uh, block your requests to uh, to those advertisers, which is great because when you don't requ don't do any requests, then your browsing is faster, and also they can't fingerprint you. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, Google, uh, Google Chrome is gaining, uh, gaining micro, micro market share, uh, and it's uh, the same market share that uh, Internet Explorer had uh, in 2009. And Google is using this power to uh, undermine those, uh, those privacy extensions, because uh, I think one month ago they announced that they, they are cutting uh, API that they are using. Uh, which, uh, because they are using too much uh, CPU power. Uh, so uh, it's not a very good thing. Uh, so I would advise you to use some other browser, uh, like Firefox or Vivaldi or Safari. Uh, Vivaldi is one that is based on Chromium, so you just change stuff that's... Uh, you have like the same browser, but uh, it's not from Google. Uh, and one last thing, be careful when you register, because this happened to Ghostery. They send you GDPR email and you saw their another 500 peop uh, email to another 500 people, which is like not, not great. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Imagine the situation when you need to get some uh, data for your tests or something like to play on your local machine, but you, for example, want to test your new feature with some production data so instead of using some factories, stuff like that. So you have a couple of options. So for example, you can dump the whole table with tools like Jenga dump data and similar, or you can use PG dump and select some parts. Also, you can use role based uh, tools like Jenga Fixture Magic or some uh, database level stuff that will work with SQL like MySQL Dump uh, and things like Jailer. All of these solutions have their own cons and pros, but in general they are really, really slow and don't allow you to do uh, to get the data fast. So I like Python. And uh, it was a use case for me on my previous job. So I wrote a small, small utility that helps you to get the data from your production or any other place, which is big enough, but you, you need only a small part. So imagine the situation that you need like uh, only first 50 keys of your employees, and you have like groups, employees, and each employee could have multiple tickets. So you need to have only 50k of your employees. And you can't just dump the table because it has a foreign key and you need a referential integrity on your local machine or wherever you would like to run it. So you need to select all related data. So I, had a bit, uh, I have a benchmark. So I tried to copy things uh, with Django dump data and load it. So it took almost four minutes or on my machine. With PG dump, it was really uh, faster. It took less than a second. Uh, Django fixture magic 
was nice, but it was still slow. And X dump was to utility I wrote was relatively acceptable. So yeah, a couple of examples when I need some data from production, I used this kind of script. So I just dumped the data I need with some settings, and then I downloaded it and load it locally. Or yeah, it has some Python API, and you can use it like this. You need to initialize backend, make a dump. So you can specify some query that you would like to run, like last uh, 10,000 of employees, and it will load all the related uh, data from other tables recursively. You don't need to care about all these related selects. And then just load it on your local machine. Yeah, it's made in Python and flexible. It guarantees referential integrity and it's pretty fast. It supports Postgres and SQLite, and it runs on recent Python versions. So that's it, pretty much. Hello, everyone. Uh, last year, I had a talk uh, presenting um, a couple of ideas how to um, display or present uh, runtime information in the IDE, in integrated development environment. And uh, today, I'm pleased to show you a like, working solution for one of the ideas. Um, it's about showing uh, exceptions in the um, in the IDE. Uh, so for the demonstration, I created a, a little uh, little program, which is a library with the basic arithmetic uh, operations. Then uh, then uh, functions which uh, which present or or give you a couple of dimensions of Earth. And then I created a little test suite which. Uh, uh, which uh, tests those those functions, and uh, yeah, as you probably could see, the static analysis uh, or, or the analyzer in PyCharm uh, is is quite happy with the with the source code. So there doesn't seem to be uh, many problems, uh, but we didn't execute it yet. So uh, I will now execute the test suite uh, by running pytest, and this is the the result of the of the suit, so one of the tests is uh, is passing, and the other ones have some some problems. Uh, so, and uh, now I would like to show you like alternative uh, presentation of all this information, which is here. Uh, you can run this uh, with with uh, a plugin from from PyCharm, and the exceptions are displayed uh, in line, like next to the like next to the line where where they happened. So, for example, when you want to fix this uh, this uh, test diameter, uh, so you can um, you could probably uh, pretty much uh, figure out just by reading or or having a look at the at the line uh, where's the problem. You can uh, have a look uh, Google like what is the diameter of Earth and to see that uh, it's really uh, twelve thousand seven forty two. So. Yeah, the assertion is wrong. Wrong. The the function seems to be correct, and the assertion is wrong. Uh, so if I, I change it and rerun the test suit, I get the the test is green, and I don't have the exception anymore. So I can move to the next one. Um, so here it says me wrong type of argument x class function. It doesn't say me much, right? I I don't know how to fix this from here. Uh, I know just just it's probably an exception which was propagated from from calling the function. So I can, with this uh, with this um, mark with this little icon, I can I can uh, go one frame down the stack trace and uh, navigate like also go go to the end and back up with these icons. And from here, I can um, figure out like what what what's wrong, right? I am I am using diameter uh, as a constant, but it's actually a function, so uh, it's a dynamic computation. If I uh, execute the test suite again now, uh, there is there is no problem. I can I can see that uh, mm, yeah, the exception disappeared. So this is the this is the solution. It's called. Uh, runtime info. It's a um, PyCharm plugin. 
and also a Python plugin, so you have to be, have both installed. Uh, you can you can install the runtime info from from plugins jetbrains.com or from directly from the uh, from PyCharm. You also have to install the Python part like this and then run PyTest runtime info for the first time and then it uh, executes uh, anytime you execute a, a test suite. And I have a favor to ask, like if you like. Uh, this and also I, I'm an author of uh, Testmon, which is a plugin for PyTest, uh, which uh, executes only tests which are affected by uh, recent changes. And I would like to integrate also uh, UI for this um, for Testmon with this solution and um, with PyCharm as a plugin. So we have, if you are interested in this, I would like you to uh, to go to the Testmon side and uh, there is a there is a, um, you can subscribe after, after submitting, after voting PyCharm to our mailing list. Thank you very much. Okay, we can start. Hello everyone, are you enjoying PyCon Slovakia? Yeah. Yeah. As you've already probably seen, uh, organizing a conference such as this is really hard work. There's a lot of people being working around this conference for more over uh, half a year. And on site we had, uh, I think, two or three dozens of volunteers. And who are we? So we are spies. And yeah, we were literally everywhere because as you can see, there, were real, there was a lot of blue t-shirt guys running around and doing that or that. So who are we? Uh, we are also the guys in the red t-shirts, because we had the uh, red t-shirts last year. And we are organizing this conference for the fourth time in a row, uh, each year here in Slovakia, here, each year here in this, uh, at this very faculty. And uh, we started off uh, three years ago uh, by uh, three guys called Richard, Daniel, and Johnny. And these three guys uh, decided to create a, co a, a community conference here in Slovakia. And after that, a lot of people joined in and started working on it. And they joined in through, uh, uh, th through uh, joining on, on meetups, which we hold once, uh, once each month, usually the second or first uh, Tuesday in Progress Bar. Have you heard of Progress Bar? If not, so you probably weren't listening at the quiz because we were giving week passes uh, to progress by, uh, at, uh, at the quiz. And uh, not only we are doing those uh, meetups, we are also doing a special educational part of the whole conference, which is called Edu, uh, Edu Summit, and it used to be called EduTrack. And we got inspired by one of the speakers who came to us uh, two years, or two or three years ago, actually, uh, Nicholas Tolloway, and he told us that we have a homework. And that homework is, is to organize an uh, educational track uh, for teachers and for students at PyCon Slovakia in 2017. And what did we do? We organized it, of course. So that's the reason why now, after uh, three years of having an educational part of this conference, you could have seen a lot of teachers and a lot of kids running around and showing, displaying their micro bits and their hardware projects. Have you seen uh, some of the hardware projects? Yeah. They're all here because of a project called Teaching with Hardware. That's the sort of translation of those three words. And, and what we are doing, we are trying to bring actually something really interesting to schools. Those are little programmable devices, either via uh, a Scratch-like uh, uh, environment or via MicroPython. That's why we're doing it, because we, have, we love Python. And, and we had an incredible time during the last half year when uh, many teachers and many schools got involved and started teaching with microbits. Currently, we have over 30 schools which are actively working with us and teaching on the lessons of computing with these devices. And not only schools, we also have one very special uh, uh, community, and those are, uh, they are located in the middle of Slovakia, and uh, they, they are a uh, voluntary uh, fire department who are teaching kids at the uh, different schools around. So uh, the team behind, uh, behind Teaching with Hardware and the team behind PyCon Slovakia and all of the meetups is really big, and I re would really like to thank them and all of them. And that's why I would, would like to invite them here to the stage, and I would ask for a big round of applause for all of them. All the volunteers, please come over.
so the people can see you. And I would also like to thank Marek for his speech. And uh, I would also like uh, to thank you that you took me in and then I forced myself into this conference and it was a pleasure and I learned a lot and thank you very much. And again, these are the people to which we uh, thank for all that happened in the last two days and what will happen tomorrow.